Next on the Pray in Jesus Name show, Dr. Chaps will pray about these important issues. A United States Army chaplain receives the Congressional Medal of Honor. A Pennsylvania town defies the atheists and defends the right to pray in Jesus Name. A Kansas governor signs a new religious freedom law and an American pastor is arrested for preaching the gospel in China. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. Dr. Chaps with the Pray in Jesus' Name show, the fastest half hour in Christian television because we do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Let's get right to our first story. This comes to us from NPR, who reports it took more than 60 years, but finally an American army chaplain who died as a prisoner of war during the Korean War was awarded the the Congressional Medal of Honor by President Obama last week Thursday. Captain Emil Capon was a Catholic priest serving with the 3rd Battalion, 8th Cavalry Regiment, 1st Cavalry Division, who died at the age of 35 way back in 1951. He was not only a war hero, but now the Catholic Church is also looking into whether he will be classified as a saint. Father Capon was honored for extraordinary heroism during fighting at Unsan, Korea, and after his capture by enemy troops as a prisoner of war in November of 1950. When Chinese communist forces viciously attacked friendly elements, Chaplain Capon calmly walked through withering enemy fire in order to provide comfort and medical aid to his comrades. When they found themselves surrounded by the enemy, the able-bodied men were ordered to evacuate. And Chaplain Capon, fully aware of his certain capture, did not evacuate, but he instead, he elected to remain behind with his wounded soldiers. Herbert Miller, who is an eyewitness who served with Father Capon, describes what happened after he was wounded at Unsan. They threw a grenade, and that's when I got hit. They couldn't get out of the way. Broke my ankle and I laid there in the ditch till daylight. I saw Koreans and Chinese coming in that ditch. So I just laid down and played dead and they went right on by me. But that afternoon, I saw them coming again and I said, well, this is all it. So I was laying there and this Korean came and he stood over me with a gun and he was ready to shoot me. And as he stood there, he hesitated. Why, I don't know, but pretty quick, Father Capon came across the road. I didn't know what his name was. I didn't even know he was a chaplain. But he bent over, pushed that guy out of the way, bent down and picked me up and carried me. During the ceremony last week, President Obama said that he couldn't imagine a better example for all of us than to follow Chaplain Capon. He referred to him as an American soldier who didn't fire a gun, but who wielded the mightiest weapon of all, a love for his brothers so pure that he was willing to die so that they may live. The president said he was truly humbled to be joined by men who served alongside Father Capon, including Miller, who credits the chaplain with saving his life. So that's the news as reported by National Public Radio. And I am so grateful that the United States government is finally giving this chaplain the, the honor and the recognition that he deserves. Of course, uh, whether the Catholic Church makes him a saint, whether the government ever recognizes him, hasn't God already ordained this priest as a saint? As a believer, as a Christian follower of Jesus Christ, he obviously loved Jesus and followed Christ's example of self-sacrifice, even to lay down his own life to serve his brothers in arms. He could have turned and fled. He could have run away in fear or evacuated as even he was possibly ordered to do. Maybe that would have been the smart thing for him to get up out of there, but instead he stayed with his men. This is a chaplain who sacrificed his own life, knowing that he would be captured, held prisoner of war, and maybe even die as he did die as an enemy, enemy prisoner. He stayed with his men and he encouraged them and even saved a few lives in sacrifice of his own life. This is the definition of courage. And that's why as I discern the spirits here, I see the Holy Spirit of courage 
upon this chaplain. And we should honor chaplains who do that. Uh, here's a scripture I wanna show you from Joshua 1.9. And this is a scripture that inspired me when I was a Navy chaplain to stand up in courage and pray in Jesus' name when the government told me not to do that. So maybe Father Capon disobeyed orders when he didn't evacuate and he stayed behind with his men. Maybe I disobeyed orders when I stood up and prayed in Jesus' name and defended the Constitution when the enemies of the Constitution wanted to censor the name of Jesus. This was the scripture that inspired me and I see the Holy Spirit in this. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? God said to Joshua, do not tremble, do not be dismayed for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Are you aware of that? When, when you stand up in courage and even sometimes you're uh, laying down your life, even putting your own career or your own life at jeopardy, God is with you and God's not gonna leave you wherever you go as long as you're obeying his call to love your neighbor. Let's pray about this. Father in heaven, we pray the scriptures that even as you command us and even as we obey you, we will be strong and courageous. We will go wherever you go without fear, even if it costs our life. We pray this blessing on the memory of Chaplain Capon and uh, thank God the United States government is finally catching up to what God has declared that this man is a hero and a saint. God bless all our chaplains who take that kind of stand. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's take a short break. When we come back, a Pennsylvania town defies the atheist and stands up for the right to pray in Jesus' name. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps. This is the Pray in Jesus' Name show. And let's get right to our next story. I wanna follow up from a story we, re we reported last week out of St. John's County, Florida, where the school board is telling students they cannot say a prayer at graduation. Let's watch a news report. We have made the news, NBC and ABC News affiliate in Jacksonville, Florida, and we're gonna show this video clip right now. Florida school. Former Navy chaplain, Dr. Chaps Klingenschmidt, hosts a TV show in Colorado called Pray in Jesus' Name. He spoke on his show Tuesday about the St. John's County issue, saying atheists had offered scholarship money to give a free thought atheist message at their high school graduation. He countered with an offer of his own. We are offering a thousand dollar reward to any high school student in St. John's County, Florida, who says the Our Father, the prayer, that Jesus prayed in Matthew 5, or offers a public prayer that ends in Jesus' name over the school microphone at your graduation ceremony. I was very happy to hear from him, very happy. Val Ajay and Kim Kendall never met until this issue brought them together at a school board meeting to argue for a student's right to free speech, even if it meant a prayer at graduation. I say it's time that we make a stand as a community and support our students that their constitutional rights don't need to be bullied. Kendall wouldn't object to a prayer, but doesn't care what a student selected by the student body chooses to say. She says it's all about free speech, which can't be lost. Whether they pray, whether they don't, it's all free speech. And that's what, I'm a military brat, my dad, my grandfathers, they all fought in war 
for our freedom of speech, no matter what it is. Freedom of Religion Foundation attorney Andrew Seidel says his group offers their scholarship money to students who fight for separation of church and state, and they aren't offering money for a student to make an atheist speech at graduation. He says Dr. Chaps has gone too far. I think it's unacceptable for any citizen uh, to be inciting students to violate the law. Um, not only would giving a prayer to graduation be a violation of the Constitution, um, but given that students don't have a forum to speak at the graduation, it would also be a violation of general law. They would have to run up and grab the microphone. Isn't that amazing? Now, I just want to point out the hypocrisy of this atheist attorney, Freedom From Religion Foundation, Mr. Seidel, who says somehow that the St. John's County School Board has established a law? No, actually, it's the Florida legislature who wrote the law last year in 2012. They said it's okay to let students pray at graduation. So the atheists don't read the law, and they certainly hate the First Amendment, which protects the speaker and not the easily offended ears of the atheist complainer. Not only that, he's a hypocrite because he offered scholarship money if students would give an atheist message or discourage prayer. So isn't it wise now that we just do the same thing, that we offer a scholarship money to students to encourage prayer. And we've raised almost all of this thousand dollars, but if you wanna donate and pitch in, please visit PrayInJesusName.org and give a donation for that scholarship fund to help encourage the students to pray at their graduation. I also wanna show you a website here. I'm gonna ask you to email all six members of the St. John's County Florida School Board. Their website, and you can find all six of their private email addresses is www stjohns.k12.fl.us slash admin slash board. So go to that website, you can email all six members of the St. John's County Florida School Board and demand that they protect the student's right to pray. Here's a different story now, shifting to Pennsylvania where the city council in Pennsylvania, uh, led by President Brian Shipley, has actually stood up against the atheist complainers. This story comes from christiannews.net. A city council in Pennsylvania plans to defy demands by an atheist or activist organization to end invocations at their monthly meetings, reports state. Brian Shipley, the president of Greenville City Council, recently received a letter from the Wisconsin-based Freedom From Religion Foundation, which claimed that prayers, which are led by members of the Lakeland Ministerial Association, somehow violate the separation of church and state. It is advised that there had been a complaint from a local resident who felt uncomfortable with the invocations. However, reporters at the Sharon Herald advised that city council members are not budging. I am perfectly okay with prayer at meetings, stated Councilman Anthony D'Alfonso. I think this is a long-standing tradition that should be honored. Councilman Ted Jones recalled the Freedom From Religion Foundation's complaint as pretty crazy. I think it's pretty stupid, he told the publication. I don't think we should do anything. President Shipley noted that while the city has been accommodating the prayers for as long as anyone can remember, no one has ever really lodged a complaint. He advised that the council is not gonna change its practice for one unhappy individual. The atheists complain, however, that the prayers are unconstitutional and therefore they must discontinue. So that's the news. Uh, let me just say this is obviously a bunch of hypocrisy on the part of the atheist. When they stand up and say somehow the First Amendment of the Constitution prohibits free speech, prohibits religious expression, that's just ridiculous. The job of the government is to protect religious expression. And that's what the city council's doing in Pennsylvania. And I pray they do the same thing in Florida. We need to stand up against these atheists. Some places they're doing it, some places they're cowards, but we need to all have enough courage to do what the Bible says. Here's what the scriptures command us in Colossians 3, verse 17. This is for any Christian who believes the Bible. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him, to God the Father. Isn't this amazing? We must do everything in Jesus' name. So when they try to censor that word Jesus as illegal speech, they're commanding us to disobey God and we must obey God rather than men. Let's pray about this. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you would give liberty 
not just in Pennsylvania, not just in Florida, but everywhere it's under attack by these atheist complainers, we pray that you would give courage to the citizens to rise up and pray publicly in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's take one more short break. When we come back, Kansas signs a new religious freedom law. Thank you for joining us in prayer. Stay tuned for valuable info about partnering with Dr. Chaps. Hi, I'm Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna make available to you a very powerful teaching series that we put together just for you. This four hour DVD has an amazing amount of information and this 90 minute audio version on CD is a condensed version. You can have either one just by visiting our website at PrayInJesusName.org or calling us toll free at 866-Obey-God. In the first hour, we will tell you all about the revival that I saw at the Air Force Academy. In the second hour, we'll teach you about the importance of prayer and fasting and sanctification for this spiritual battle that we're all in. In the third hour, we'll tell you about the ministry of deliverance and even the miracles and exorcism stories that I saw when I was a Navy chaplain. In the fourth hour, we'll tell you about standing up for religious liberty, how I took a stand and faced my own court martial, how we won the victory in Congress, 300,000 petition signers. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or call us right now, toll free, at 866-Obey-God. These are important products for you and your church. God bless you in Jesus' name. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. We're gonna report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Our next story comes to us from our friends at Citizen Link. Kansas Governor Sam Brownback signs a Kansas Preservation of Religious Freedom Act. The Republican Christian Governor Sam Brownback of Kansas signed into law the Kansas Preservation of Religious Freedom Act, HB 2203 which codifies important legal standards to be used in legal cases involving religious liberty concerns before Kansas courts. The Kansas Senate overwhelmingly approved the measure by a vote of 34 to four on March 21st. The Kansas House of Representatives followed suit, approving the legislation by a vote of 109 to 12 on March 25th. Kansans can now rely on permanent statutory protection of their religious liberties, stated Robert Nolan, executive director of the Kansas Family Policy Council. Kansas has a long history of protecting religion and the rights of conscience. The Kansas Preservation of Religious Freedom Act continues that rich tradition by codifying the current judicial standards requiring a compelling government interest must be proven before the state or local law can require that any Kansan must act or not act in any manner that violates their deeply held religious beliefs. The wide margin of support in both the Kansas House of Representatives and the Senate demonstrates a willingness to continue the tradition of reverence and respect according to religious liberty in Kansas. Current pending legal challenges to controversial federal mandates for health care impacting religious organizations and individual religious liberties illustrates just how important these protections are at the federal level. Now the passage of HB 2203 in Kansas is a significant step in statutorily implementing the same protections here in Kansas. The Kansas Preservation of Religious Freedom Act was authored by Representative Lance Kinzer, Republican from Olathe, and enjoyed the level of support from 40 other co-sponsors in the Kansas House. This bill now codifies for Kansas courts the same legal protections for religious liberty that currently exist in the federal judicial system. The stricter standards have been in place in the federal law since Congress passed the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, RIFRA, in 1993, in response to weakening judicial standards and now protects religious liberties. RIFRA passed the U.S. House of Representatives unanimously and won approval in the U.S. Senate by a margin of 97 to three before then President Clinton signed into law. The federal law initially provided the same strict scrutiny standards regarding religious liberty that individual states until 1997 had until the Supreme Court struck down the act's ability to mandate such protections in state courts. So now it's federal law, but not state law, state law and RIFRA standards could not be mandated in state courts. So then it had become incumbent on each state to act on its own to implement the strict scrutiny standard to be used in cases involving religious liberty. Now up to date, 20 states, including Kansas, have enacted state protections to defend that religious liberty. 
Isn't that wonderful? I think that's so critical and I pray that other states, we need to find out which ones and we need to stand for this. So that's the news as reported by Citizen Lake. Let's discern the spirits. Is there a spirit of tyranny in some states that say, oh no, judges can throw away your religious liberty. The government can impose tyranny, force you to violate your conscience and there shouldn't be a higher legal standard, the strict scrutiny standard. I think that's a demonic spirit that would say, that would empower our government to take away your freedom of conscience and let the law easily trample on your ability to obey God. I think that's a demonic spirit. So we need to pray against that. And I'm gonna quote the law here, the, the highest law, which is the law of liberty in James chapter one. This is God's law, regardless of what Kansas law, federal law, God's highest law is the one that promotes liberty. And the Bible says, if you look into the perfect law of liberty and you continue therein, in other words, the Bible, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, doer of the word, you gotta obey the Bible, this man will be blessed in his deed. Would you pray this with me? Father in heaven, we pray the scriptures and we obey your highest law, the law of liberty, the Bible, which gives us religious freedom, especially to obey the conscience that you've placed in each one of us. When our conscience agrees with the Holy Spirit, we must obey the command of God, even if we disobey the government or even if the government tries to oppress or persecute us for doing the right thing. God bless our government officials to have the wisdom to implement God's highest law, the law of liberty. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, one more break. An American pastor is persecuted and jailed in China. Hi, this is Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna thank you for participating and watching this important message today about defending religious liberty. If there's anything our message proves is that we can make a difference. If we will rise up together as the Church of Jesus Christ, we do not need to be ashamed of the name of Jesus. I need you to participate today in one of four ways. Please visit our website at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign our free petitions to defend religious liberty. Number two, I need you to call us at 866-Obey-God and we, you can sign what they call a fax petition. You don't have to know how to operate a fax machine, but for a nominal fee, we will fax your petition to all 100 senators or all 535 congressmen to defend the right to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, please purchase our DVDs and CDs with important teachings about defending religious liberty around the country. And number four, please donate. These rallies cost us thousands of dollars and we need your donations to stay on the air. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and do what you can to help. God bless you in Jesus' name. Charisma News reports that an American pastor, Dennis Belcom, who's a well-known U.S. church leader who ministers in China, was placed under house arrest last week Saturday. China Aid has learned that Dennis Balcom was detained following a raid on a house church revival meeting, and his current whereabouts at the time of that report were unknown, but now it's reported that he's been released and returned to America. In the Henan province, seven house church leaders in the Pingding Shan district have been sentenced to prison terms raising from three years to seven and a half years on cult charges. In Nanyang, a raid by the police, the domestic security protection agents, and officials from the Religious Affairs Bureau occurred Saturday morning, just hours after the start of what had been planned as a three-day revival meeting. They had attendees from the city of Wenzhou and the provinces of Hubei and Henan, along, among other places. According to one attendee, the house church that organized the meeting specializes in prayer ministry and calls itself Mount Prayer Church. He says it is believed to be part of the Fengzheng Fellowship, one of China's largest and oldest house church networks. But about 10 a.m., not long after meeting, the meeting began, several dozen police, domestic security protection agents, and religious affairs bureau officials swarmed into the room Without showing any identification, the officials began filming and photographing the event. When a Christian attendee tried to videotape them with his digital camera, the camera was confiscated and had not yet been returned. And Pastor Balcom was later released and is now safely back in America. But he said the Chinese authorities were probably investigating if the meeting was a cult gathering, as somebody had called to report to the police 
that there was a religious meeting in which foreigners were present. There were only about 70 local Chinese in the meeting, but with the recent activities of the Eastern Lightning Cult and other cults, they just wanted to check out the meeting to make sure the Christians were not actually members of a cult. Seven house church leaders were then sentenced on April 1st to prison sentences, raising, raising excuse me, from three years to seven and a half years, according to the well-known Christian lawyer, Li Bangguang. Their defense lawyers received the verdict and sentencing papers just last week. It's estimated now that 15% of the 95 million people in the Hainan province where the pastors were arrested are followers of Jesus Christ. So that's the news from Charisma. Uh, you know, the Hainan province is also where Hudson Taylor got his start and you know the Inland Mission Network and all of the Christian missionaries over the years since really the 17 and 1800s have been sacrificing and been persecuted for Jesus Christ. I encourage you to pray for revival in China. And this is how it starts. You know, it's, it's interesting. There might be a conflict here between the federal government of China and the local officials of China because they're inviting Pastor Balcom back to preach again. They said, as long as you just tell us if you're going into that local region, we'll straighten it out with the local police. But my question is, why aren't the local pastors being released? We need to give freedom. If, if they're gonna let Americans preach in China, they have to let Chinese preach also. Give them the same freedom and let's pray for that together. Here's a scripture from Matthew 5. And again, we're gonna pray against the demonic spirit of tyranny that is in the persecutors. Jesus said in Matthew 5, and let's pray this scripture together. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray your blessing upon those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Father, we rejoice with them and we are glad despite their persecution because great is their reward in heaven. For this is how they prosecuted the prophets which were before them. God bless those pastors. Give them justice and freedom to preach the gospel in China. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let me preview tomorrow's show. Uh, I pray that you'll come back the same channel, the same time slot, because tomorrow we're gonna discuss, is the Muslim flag soon gonna fly over the White House? Our clergy being banned as first responders in the Boston bombing. Is there a nationwide call for September 11th to now become a day of prayer and fasting? And is the Secretary of Defense of the United States actually warning Israel to stop defending herself? These are critical stories we're following. God bless you in Jesus' name, we'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.